have all 12 teams paired up, ready to go. The reason we teach sales in the MBA curriculum is because in the real world of business, there are two types of problems. So this is actually the most critical round. You either put yourself on a trajectory to win or you end up in a hole that you spend all the rest of your time trying to dig your way out of. Not enough orders and everything else. Team 10 has submitted. And this sales class, it's about not enough orders. So they probably took my advice to heart. I always tell people, show up with your first move already planned out. We created the game to teach forecasting so that we get a bad forecast so we can show them the problems with getting a good forecast. That was the whole purpose of doing this thing. Levers. Essentially what they have to do is they have to make three decisions. They first of all have to figure out what their sales goal is going to be. Then they have to set quota across three different regions. And the final decision is personnel. How many sales managers and how many reps are you going to deploy to these regions to make your quota? All we have to decide is so We try to create in the simulation the environment in, in the sales force. It's very interesting. We're going to judge you on how much you make and how much you book and how successful you are. And by the way, we want you to forecast. And we do this thing, and all of a sudden, the class is on fire. All right, we have nine minutes, so let's, let's, let's agree to come to a decision with three minutes to go. Oh, you're right. Blood comes up. People get really excited about competing in this thing. We didn't know we were going to get that effect. And when we got it, it was just gravy for us. It was really good. They have a maximum of 10 minutes to read the results, do additional analysis, modify their budgets, and then submit a feasible plan. Now they've only got about six minutes left. Students get to decide what roles they play. Yeah, are they done? Send them off for coffee and tell them we'll meet them back in the classroom. What we're going to do is we're going to go on from here to have a discussion with these teams. We're going to find out what strategies the winners and the losers deploy. How did you decide what decisions you would make, who you would hire, where you would deploy your resources, what number you would shoot for, and how you would make that number. We started and set an initial quote of 85 million, mm -hmm. hit 112 in the first quarter, so what we were doing was trying to spend less up front and make sure that our reps hit quota and didn't quit. Wow. Yes, Team 3. That sounded almost identical to our strategy. Our target was like 86 million, and we tried to not over allocate to Central, and we just missed badly. So I, I think this is actually good to talk about once we get into some of the consequences. I think it's important to understand where these kind of strategies, where they don't pan out as you expect. In addition to solving the forecasting problem, which we did, we created an environment where pretty big differences in the MBAs here have an opportunity to feel what it's like to be in a group of people where you get judged by your numbers as you perform. So, so long as we're going to pretend Rio, we'll go at Carnival. Right? You're going to Game over. I don't know why, what happened. When the game is over, we can talk about the experience of what it felt like of being a salesman. And that is something they get. I think the system is faulty. It must be. <laughs> I love learning. <laughs> Our planning was impeccable. We crushed them with 300 <laughs>